So now let us move to uh, E45. Uh, this opening is called Scandinavian Defense. Um, actually makes a lot of sense because with this move, uh, black is immediately fighting uh, against white's central dominance and uh, actually forcing white to exchange uh, this E4 pawn. Uh, because, okay, e5 is obviously not so great because black can play c5, knight c6, and the pawn on the 5 is too exposed. Uh, so white practically has to take on d5. Uh, and now black has two ways to try to take the, this pawn back with queen takes d5, the most natural, but there is another move, knight f6. So uh, strategically, uh, of course, uh, let's say after queen takes d5, uh, black has uh, quite a good situation in the center, and it would have been just great this e4 d5 defense if not uh, that black violates uh, with this uh, another uh, well uh, important rule uh, of the opening play, which is not to uh, jump out with his, with your queen too quickly, yeah, because now white starts to gain tempest attacking black's queen. Um, so, but again, yeah, there is an advantage and disadvantage. So it's not uh, obviously so bad to, to play d5, of course. Um, and uh, altogether, what can I say about uh, the uh, arising positions in this opening is that it's very much, most of the time, it very much uh, reminds the pawn structures of uh, uh, Karakan defense, uh, which we will study later, which is d4, uh, e4, c6, d4, d5, knight c3, d, knight x, e4. So more or less the same structure, uh, uh, which is quite solid for black. Uh, if black is in time to develop well, to castle and to finish his development. So uh, that is the main uh, uh, battlefield of this opening, uh, is that white should try to be fast because he has a certain development advantage in development and try to create initiative and some maybe even direct threats um, using this time uh, his opponent is finishing his development, yeah, um, and uh, trying to castle and to get his kin to the safe uh, place. So, uh, after e takes d5, yeah, there is a move knight f6. It's actually already, well, really out of fashion. I, I wouldn't recommend you this move. I think white is quite considerably better here. So, of course, the black's idea, he wants to take with a knight yeah, on d5 and then not to lose tempest uh, moving around with his queen. Uh, but, uh, well, I mean, white can try to protect this pawn, of course, to play c4, but then black has uh, whether e6, whether c6, uh, this pawn sacrifice, and after white, if white takes one of those pawns, E or C pawn, then black has an, well, a better development, and there is a certain issue with the D4 square, and uh, that is considered to be more or less okay for, uh, uh, for black. But uh, D4 is quite a problem, yeah, because now uh, knight takes d5 is logical. There isn't uh, a move bishop g4, it exists, it's more like a you know, tricky move, uh, trying to confuse the opponent. Uh, but, uh, well, first of all, white can play in a very principal manner, which is f3, trying to uh, hold this pawn, let's say bishop f5, and now g4, for example. Uh, so black is trying bishop g6, c4, e6. So black tries to sacrifice the pawn and then to try to develop initiative because he has some uh, development advantage. But, uh, for example, white can simply play knight c3, e d5, g5, uh, knight f d7, knight takes d5, knight c6. And probably the best move is h4. Uh, I think this position is better for white objectively, but of course it's very sharp. 